Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on options. In this presentation, I will first give you an overview about options and specifically we will talk about call options, put options, the concept of moneyness, the concept of over-the-counter versus exchange traded options. So that will be part one. Then in part two, we'll talk about different kinds of options from financial options to commodity options and so on. And finally, in part three, we'll talk about the principles of option pricing. So let's start with the basics. What is a call option? Now, there are two kinds of call options, a European call option and a American call option. A European call option gives the owner of the option the right but not the obligation to buy an underlying asset at a given price at a given date. Let's understand this through an example. Let's say you are the proud owner of an option and the way you can think of this is as follows. You pay $3 for this option which is essentially a piece of paper or a contract that you have purchased from somebody else. Let's just call that somebody else the option writer. Now this piece of contract says the following. It says that based on this contract you have the right to buy shares of IFT at a strike price of $25 on 31st December 2011. Now there will be several other pieces of information but this is the core information. So let me repeat this. Uh, for, by paying $3 to the option writer or the counterparty, you have received this contract which gives you the right to buy a share, one share of IFT at a strike price or exercise price of $25 on 31st December and let's say that when you purchase this share it is 25th October I'm sorry when you purchase this contract or when you purchase this call option now the underlying here by underlying we mean whenever we talk about derivatives be they forwards futures or options there is always some underlying in this case the underlying is a uh, stock but when you get into this option, so when you paid $3 to purchase this option, what you got is this piece of paper or this contract. Now what's the benefit of this contract? The benefit is that let's say when you come out to, to 31st December, let's say that the stock price, let's denote that by S, stock price is equal to 30 since you have the right but not the obligation to buy the underlying for 25 you will exercise this option so what that means is you will go to the short party or the counterparty in other words the party that sold this option to you and you will pay that party the strike price of 25 this is called exercising the option so you will pay $25 and when you pay $25 you will now actually own the share of IFT and then you can go to the market and sell this share for $25. So essentially what you have done here is you have made $5 on 31st December. So that is called your payoff and we will see payoff diagrams later but I just want to give you a quick preview right now this is what a payoff diagram looks like on the x-axis we have the stock price or the price of the underlying in this case since we are talking about IFT which is our, which is our underlying stock so let's just call this S or the uh, stock price and then on the y-axis we basically show the payoff the idea is this and this is a payoff diagram at maturity had the stock price at maturity been 20 so if the stock price was 20 at maturity then you would not exercise the option why because if you can get the stock for $20 in the market there is no point paying $25 for this in other words your option 
on 31st December is worthless. Later we will use the term out of the money. So the payoff diagram looks like this. So this is your zero point. Basically till the strike price which in this case is 25 the payoff for our call option is zero and if the stock price is more than 25 on um, on this maturity or exercise date then obviously our payoff increases so we then have a line that looks like this where if the stock price is 25 on payoff um, on maturity then the payoff is 1 if the stock price is 30 as it was in this case then the payoff is 5 and so on so this is what our payoff diagram looks like for a very simple call option now an american call option gives the owner the right but not the obligation to buy an underlying at a given price by a given date what this means is that if you have the right to buy the underlying share for 25 you can exercise this right any day till the exercise date so again let's say that we have a very similar contract where the underlying is one share of IFT the strike price again is 25 and the maturity date is 31st December but if this is an American option then any time between now time 0 and 31st December the owner of this option can exercise this option so if on 25th December you decide that the stock price has peaked and you want to exercise the option you can go to the writer of the option and give him the strike price of 25 and essentially exercise the option so this essentially says that any time from the time you purchase the option till the maturity date you have the right but not the obligation to exercise the option there is another key point that I want to emphasize here when we talk about options in options the holder of the option has the right but not the obligation so notice the payoff over here is one-sided this needs to be contrasted with futures and forwards when we talked about futures and forwards both the both parties the party a and party b in my examples from both futures and forwards both parties had obligations but when we talk about a call option and later when we talk about a put option the holder of the option has as the term implies has a right or an option but not the obligation to exercise now why does he have this right he has this right because he has paid three dollars in my simple example to buy this option the counterparty who writes the option does not have any does not have the right in other words if if let's say we went and purchased this option for three dollars that by the way is called the option premium or the market price of the option so we paid three dollars to get this option contract then the counterparty needs to needs to oblige if we go to him and say we want to exercise so the owner of the option has the right but uh, to write to ex to exercise the option if he so chooses but the counterparty who initially received this three dollars has to fulfill his side if he is asked to do so now let's talk about a put option and again we have a European put option and a American put option and as an aside European put option versus American the European and the American have absolutely nothing to do with the, the continents and it is purely a convention that a European option can only be exercised on one date which is the exercise date whereas an American option as you as we just discussed can be exercised anytime till the exercise date so what's a put option again a put option is a contract so let's say we purchase this put option and again there is an underlying so let's say that for this contract or this put option this gives us the right but not the obligation to sell an underlying at a given price at a given date so again what will this contract specify it will specify the underlying so let's say the underlying is one share of IFT and again there needs to be a strike price which let's say again is 25 
and there needs to be a maturity which is 31st December. So if we purchase this option, we let's say pay $2 which is the option premium and this essentially now gives us the right but not the obligation to sell one share of the underlying. The underlying here is IFT. So this gives us the right but not the obligation to sell the underlying for $25 which is the strike price and exercising the option means going to the counterparty and saying okay I want to sell the underlying. Now how, when does this benefit us? This actually benefits us if the price of the underlying goes below 25. Why? The way you can think of this is as follows. Let's again just draw a simple payoff diagram and again the x-axis is the stock price and the y-axis is the payoff. Let's say that at maturity the so I'll again draw the maturity picture so this is time zero which is now when you purchase the option and this is 31st December since this is a European option we can only exercise this option on maturity day if at maturity day the stock price is 30 then the right to sell for 25 is worthless why because if you happen to own this share and you can sell it for 25 uh, if you can sell it for 30 in the market then the right to sell for 25 is worthless so as long as we are above the strike price of 25 for a put option the option is worthless in other words there is no payoff or the payoff is zero but what if at if on 31st December the price is stock price is 20 if the stock price is 20 then clearly this option is worth something because if the share price is 20 what you could do as the owner of this option you could go buy the share for $20 in the market and then you can go to the counterparty and exercise the option exercising the option would mean selling the share to him for $25 so if the share price is 20 at maturity the payoff is is 5 so if that is 20 then the payoff is 5 and if we draw this overall payoff diagram what we will notice is something like this where as the price goes lower and lower the payoff on the put option becomes higher and higher and the highest possible payoff is 25 which you get if the stock price goes down to zero and obviously why would somebody why would somebody purchase this put option he would purchase a put option if his view is that the stock price is going to go down we'll see later that put options can also be used to hedge the risk of an existing stock or existing stock portfolio going down but we will worry about that later right now if you just purely go buy a put option on a given stock uh, then that would imply that you you think the stock price will go down an American option again as we've just discussed before simply says that you have the right but not the obligation to sell the underlying asset by a given date so if the exercise price is 31st if the exercise date is 31st December then you can exercise this option by uh, on any day uh, till 31st December so I have alluded to the concept of moneyness before and there are three terms that you need to know if we say that a stock uh, that an option is in the money this essentially means that if you exercise the option today you will make money so let's take a simple example of a call option where the strike price is 25 if the current if the current stock price is equal to let's say 26 then we are in the money so given that this is a call option what does this mean this means that the strike price is 25 so you have the right to buy the share for 25 in the market it is selling for 26 so for a call option as long as the stock price is greater than the exercise price we are in the money what about if this were a put option so if this is a put option 
then to be in the money the stock price has to be less than the exercise price why because if this is a put option and the exercise price is equal to 25 we can only make some money if the stock price is less than 25 so for a put option to be in the money the stock price is uh, the stock price needs to be less than the exercise price another term that you need to know is out of the money so this for a call option would simply mean that the stock price is less than the exercise price so if our exercise price is 25 and our stock price is say 24 that means that if this is the call option then it is out of the money exercising the option uh, actually uh, if the the owner of this option will not exercise the option he will not go and buy the stock for 25 if it is available in the market for 24 and now what about for a put option for a put option to be out of the money the stock price needs to be greater than the strike price so if the strike price is 25 and the stock price is 26 then the right to sell a share for 25 is worthless if the market price of the share is 26 and finally at the money and I'm sure you can guess what this means if the stock price is equal to the exercise price then the option is at the money very briefly you need to understand the distinction between over the county over the counter and exchange listed options now if you have a options exchange as we as we do have in say New York and Chicago this implies that options are being traded on a formal exchange so in the US for example we have exchanges where we can buy and sell call options on stocks put options on stocks so when you have an exchange and a clearing house and essentially call and put options are being bought and sold the way we can buy shares on the stock exchange then essentially we say that those options are exchange traded and call options and put options on stocks are these days at least in the US they are bought and sold on a exchange historically call and put options were, were bought and sold in the over-the-counter market in the over-the-counter market we have basically brokers and dealers so in in the old days at least in the US if somebody wanted to buy a call option he had to go to a dealer and that dealer might have been some financial institution and he would have had to buy an option from that dealer in Pakistan for example options are bought and sold in the over-the-counter market so we have a few banks which are called authorized derivative dealers so if a given entity wants to go and buy a call option or sell an option sell an option that entity needs to go deal with one of the authorized derivative dealers so in Pakistan derivative uh, option based transactions are called over the counter because they don't happen on a formal exchange they happen between private parties so a simple example might be that if TIA wants to buy a call option on say oil or we have several options that are based on currencies then the entity has to go and interact with one of the authorized derivative dealers which would be banks like UBL and so on so not a whole lot of detail here just the basic points you need to understand which is essentially what I've just talked about